Hello and welcome to the Academy. Let us take up today's editorials on the Hindu newspaper. So the first editorial we are going to take up is about mitigating tragedies in the Himalayan region. So we have recently seen so many articles on the Himalayan region about the environment protection in the Indian Himalayan region. So this is in addition to those articles. So I urge aspirants to take notes of every aspect on Indian Himalayan region like we have already seen the environment impact assessment and a study we have seen about the carrying capacity assessment in the Indian Hima Himalayan region. Then today it is particularly talking about the disaster management of one of the hazard that is glacial lake outburst floods. So in this backdrop we will take up this issue of glacial lake outburst floods and what are its impacts and then especially we are going to deal with the geographical aspects as well as how to effectively manage the disaster which is the outcome of the GLOF. So without wasting much time we will get into this article. So as I have already said we will look this article or the phenomena of GLF, GLOF in two broader terms that is disaster management as well as geography. So henceforth this topic becomes important from your GS1 paper where geography as well as transformations in the geographies in the Indian subcontinent is one of your topic and then in GS3 there is disaster management. So first we will take up the geographical aspects. So when it comes to glacial lake outburst floods you need to first understand what are glacial lakes, how they are formed. So there is a high chances of UPSC asking such kind of static questions which is present in your NCRTs. In the 11th class physical uh, geography you have the various landforms and one of the landform is the glacial landforms. So you need to look about the landforms formed by the glacier movement. So what is glacier here? Glacier is nothing but moving ice where the sediment which has which will be eroded by the moving ice will also be part of those glaciers and then the water which has melted but still remains within the ice structure is also part of the glaciers. So essentially it means the moving ice. So whenever uh, ice cover is affected by the gravity and the slope of the mountains the ice slowly starts moving. So while moving it forms certain landforms those are called as erosional landforms made by the glaciers. So this is a pictorial representation of the erosional land forms of the glaciers. So here you have the huge U valleys, U shaped valleys and then these U shaped large valleys are supplemented by the hanging valleys and then you have the horns where at every side the moving glacier has eroded leaving behind a point and for this there is an example of the mountain that is Matterhorn and aspirants please comment where the Matterhorn mountain is present and then there is an arid structure made out of these erosional landforms and then cirques and then many lakes like Peter Noster lakes, Tarn lakes are made out of glaciers. So hence you have seen these erosional landforms will further lead to formation of the glacial lakes. For example in the Tarn lakes where the molten water will get deposited and forms into glacial lakes and this is the erosional landform made by the glaciers. Then moving further we will look into the depositional landforms made by the glacier. So we, are, we have already seen that in this picture the huge landmass has been eroded in some parts due to the movement of the glaciers. So this eroded landforms or the material which is removed will be deposited at one place. So we will look into the depositional form of the uh, depositional landforms made by the glaciers. So the depositional aspects are drumlin where this is eroded material and then eskers. So these are all the patterns made by the removed material. So these drumlins, eskers, cans and ground marine bedrocks forms into a bank like structure where the deposit will happen in a circular manner. and 
within the deposited bank like structure the water the receded glacier melting water will get deposited and this forms into a glacial lake where the banks are loosely or built or formed on the drumlins so hence we have seen in both the forms that is erosional as well as depositional aspect the formation of the glacial lakes so after seeing the formation of the glacial lakes we will look into how the glacial lakes will lead to outbursts and further causing the floods so in the glacial lakes if the collapse of moraines which have been formed like already we have seen the depositional aspects if a large bank happens to be there then the water is also present inside it then a part of the uh, formation of bank like structure made by the moraines starts if they starts falling into the lakes then this lake or the water level in this lake gets increased and further it breaches the entire moraine our entire bank structure built on the moraines so hence this will lead to the outburst phenomenon and then the floods will occur so hence the collapse of any moraines or landmass or even the glacial structures rather than uh, melting in a sl slow manner if the glacier starts breaking away due to the increasing temperature or any discrepancies in the slopes then the huge mass of glacial structures itself if they falls into it it breaches the banks and water level increases it further raises the pressure of the moraines or bank structures then the result will be outburst so moving ahead the rapid receding of glacial mass will also increase to the outburst as in this article it has been already discussed that the rapid increase in the temperature like from 0 to 5 degree celsius in the 4 days would eventually lead to glacial lake outburst due to the rapid receding of the glacial mass and then the frequent phenomenon of cloud burst where there will be heavy downpour of rainfall that is around 10 cm of rainfall will occur in the 1 square kilometer or sorry 10 square kilometer then if such a downpour happens then the water level will further raise and increase pressure on the moraine like bank structures and further moving ahead we have seen the landslides have been occurring in the himalayas due to the uh, techno tectonic effect or the earthquakes so even for this reason as well the huge landmass starts falling into the glacial lakes as a result outbursts would be the phenomenon and then the earthquakes would directly affect the moraines that is built as a banks where the glacial lake is present it directly breaches the moraine which is loosely built hence as a result glacial lake outburst phenomenon will occur or floods will occur as well as the other reason is anthropogenic reason where the developmental activities across the mountain or the himalaya slopes will changes the topography and then any distortion in the slopes of the himalayas will further breaches the bank like structure where it is built with the loosely uh, deposited moraines so all this has various effects one of the effect is cascading impact which has been discussed in this article it is say, it says that the phenomenon or the hazards which is happening in the himalayas have the cascading impact even glacial lake outburst floods is a result of the cascading impact where if the landslides occur or even for that matter a uh, cloud burst occurs it breaches the glacial lake outburst and then flood will be the result the flood will not just occur isolated manner but it will cause further landslides due to the intensity of the floods or sudden flood which is happening due to the outburst so hence this has a cascading impact on the geography as well as livelihood of the people so 
in the first scenario we look into the what are the geographical impact so here we have already seen how it impacts the topography of the region where the slopes of the himalayas gets damaged and distorted and then it impacts the water water holding capacity which has a hydrological impact on the region since himalayas are considered as a water towers any change in the uh, topography would impact the people who are dependent on the himalayas for the water resources and then the impact on livelihood is also huge where the property loss and then the people who are indigenous who are wholly and solely dependent on the himalayas will get hugely impacted and then it also affects the developmental projects where a substantial amount of the revenue will be allocated and this due to the due to the glacial lake outburst phenomenon the revenues allocated will get wasted so hence these are all the impact of the gloof on the geography as well as livelihood and the developmental efforts which were carried on in the himalayan region so after looking into the geographical aspects where we have already seen the how how the glacial lakes will be formed and what are the causes for the breach of the glacial lakes which would lead to outburst floods and then what are the impacts what are the different types of landforms made by the glaciers so after looking into the geographical static portion of the uh, our syllabus we'll look into the current affairs part where disaster management will play a key role in the gs3 paper so before getting into the disaster uh, aspect of the glacial lakes we'll look into what is the definition so disaster management has a standard definition but we'll take up the definition in a organic manner where i will explain the components of the disaster following that we'll look into the definition where you will get a better understanding so disaster management has two components one is hazard as i have written here and then vulnerabilities hazards are nothing but the natural phenomenon of in the geography where we have the earthquakes tsunami cyclones these are all the natural geographical phenomena due to the differences in the temperature pressure so this natural geographical phenomenon is called as hazard so to map the hazard uh, zonation of india you will you will get to know that the northern india almost every part of northern india falls under zone 5 of the earthquake intensity area so hence the hazard are common in any geographical area so in a similar manner glacial lakes formation is also common so in this article as well it is given that india indian subcontinent uh, hosts around 27% of of the 2000 28000 glacial lakes so this is a natural hazard where the glacial lakes are already present so any changes in the topography will lead to glacial lake outburst floods so this is a natural phenomenon so hazard is always present so this kind of hazard is generally measured in terms of magnitude scale while measuring the earthquake magnitude we use richter scale and in terms of measuring magnitude of the cloud burst or the rainfall or the cyclones will measure through the uh, mm or centimeters in a particular square kilometers so this is nothing but measuring the magnitude of the natural hazards there is also another component in the disaster management that is vulnerabilities vulnerabilities are nothing but how much prone we are to the impact of the hazards so in the glacial lake outburst phenomenon itself or the floods itself the people who are impacted are settled in the downstream areas of the himalayas where the floods would affect the people who are settled in the valleys or in the downstream parts even in terms of earthquake the delhi region even though it is, it has been ranked in the zone 5 there is a huge settlements in the region so this is nothing but vulnerabilities how much prone we are to the impact of the hazards how much life will be lost how much property will be damaged to the natural hazards which are always present 
so this is a kind this is called as vulnerabilities so even in this paper it is given that many of the people are unaware are unaware of the risk posed by the sudden glacier melt and the cascading hazards so this is nothing but vulnerabilities so people are unaware of the natural hazards so they will be prone to the impact of the hazards as well as there are there is also a developmental activities which are being carried on in the himalayan regions even though it is prone to high earthquake intensity or the magnitude so this is also a vulnerability so upsc has earlier asked what are the types of vulnerabilities so there is a social vulnerability developmental vulnerability so vulnerability here measured in terms of in terms of intensity where the impact or the observed effect will be assessed based on the loss or damage so hence in the disaster management where you have to manage this vulnerabilities and safeguard the property people as well as developmental efforts from getting impacted by the hazard so we will look into the a definition part after the explanation of disaster management so disaster management is a process of reducing vulnerabilities to alleviate the disastrous impact of the hazards like earthquake and glacial lake outburst floods so this disaster management is alternatively also called as disaster resilience disaster risk reduction adaptation mitigation of the disaster so all refers to the same phenomenon that is disaster management where we are reducing the vulnerabilities and safeguarding ourselves from the hazards of the natural environment so here mitigation in disaster management has different meaning from mitigation in the climate change mitigation in disaster management is nothing but reducing the severity of the impact of the hazards as we have already seen but in climate change it is mitigation is nothing but reducing the emissions or reducing the uh, outflow of the gases where it has a huge global warming potential so hence we in a way reducing the impact of the climate change by reducing the emissions so you need to look into the mitigation aspects or the context of the mitigation from disaster management and climate change so this is the aspect of the disaster management so we'll apply this uh, definition as well as the mechanism in the disaster management to alleviate the impact of the uh, disaster impact of the glacial lake outburst floods so before moving into the part of glacial lake outburst floods there is one more phenomenon which is haunting india that is climate change so we have already seen that our part of work is to reduce the vulnerabilities however the climate change and global warming are increasing the hazards itself so our job is not only to reduce the vulnerabilities but also reduce the hazards which have been caused by the climate change and global warming so hence we can reduce the hazards also so we have already seen that carbon deposition is being increased in the himalayan region so as a result the absorption of the sunlight will also get increased so the consequence is faster melting of glaciers and then it will further lead to glacial lake outburst and also there is increasing in the phenomenon of cloudburst because of the increasing temperature on the indian landmass and we have seen in many instances where the countries like france and germany have carried on their efforts to reduce the hazards itself for example they cover the mountain in the germany and france with the white cloth to increase the albedo of the mountains in france and germany also to protect the mountains from the carbon deposition so these are all the examples where it clearly points out that we should not only reduce the vulnerabilities of the region but also we can reduce the hazards so moving further we will apply the disaster management in the glof so how to reduce the vulnerabilities in the gl in the mid of glof so first we need to install the robust monitoring system where it constantly uh, monitors the change in topographies 
a change in the flow of the water or flow of the glaciers and the receding of glaciers. So here the camera sensors automated systems can be used and there is an example that the National Disaster Management Authority has uh, effectively installed cameras and monitoring system and solar powered automated system in the glacial lakes that is South Lonak and then Shakocho. So this is the first step where we need to constantly monitor and it supplements our efforts in the early warning system. So early warning systems would be if the early warning system would be uh, would be supplemented with the monitoring system then our efforts in early warning becomes more efficient it would be more fruitful. So hence the next step is connecting end to end early warning system where even the last house in the downstream area during the glacial lake outburst floods would get the early warning alarms. And the next is uh, building the check dams. Check dams are not the conventional dams which are built in a very huge structure in order to get the uh, hydroelectric energy generation. But these are all the dams which are built to regulate the flow of the water. So this creates obstacles to the floods which would be the outcome of the glacial lake outburst. So hence it should be built nearby the nearby to the glacial lake. So in this article it has already given that NDMA has looked into the sites where the check dams could be constructed and then there are geoengineering techniques and geotechnical ways where the waters in the glacial lake would be discharged through pipelines, pumps and spillway tracks so that the pressure on the moraines and banks would be reduced. And then our developmental policies and strategies should align with the geographical and climate resilience sensitivity of the Himalayan region. And then multi-stakeholder approach should also be followed which is which has been discussed in this article where different departments should collaborate in order to deal with the mitigational efforts of the glacial lake outburst floods where remote sensing agencies which frames the atlases of, of the topography or the Indian Himalayan region and then the water department where central water commission should also be uh, roped in. So all this collaboration will give us a comprehensive picture and we could move forward in our mitigation efforts through all these inputs. So then there is also a glacial uh, lake outburst floods mitigation plan which is being released by the NDMA where the author of this article calls scientific community sh should also share their resources and capacity in order to form the robust mitigational plan in order to deal with the glacial lake outburst floods. So this is for this article and there is also a conclusion where you can directly quote in your mains examination that the appropriate synergies should have to be created to increase focus on prevention mitigation which will eventually reduce the loss and damage and brings stability into the lives of the hill communities where they are completely dependent on Himalayas for their livelihood. So this is for this article today we have taken it in a more comprehensive manner where we have covered the geography of the glacial lakes outburst floods and then we have also covered the disaster management aspect of the glacial lake outburst floods. So there is high chance that UPSC might ask directly either of the topic or in a combined manner which it has already asked in the year 2022 on the topic of uh, the cloudburst. So here is the question, explain the mechanism and occurrence of cloudburst in the context of Indian subcontinent. Discuss two recent examples. So you can replace cloudburst with the glacial lake outburst floods where it, it the question can be framed like explain the mechanism of glacial lake outburst phenomenon or explain the mechanism of how glacial lakes will be formed and explain the occurrence where, where all it occurs and you can also be asked about how the disaster management can be applied in order to mitigate the glacial lake outburst floods. 
So this is all about today and we will take up more articles in the upcoming sessions. Thank you.